afternoon and welcome to Counseling Connections. This is our podcast. I'm Tinja Purvis. I'm Stanley Purvis. And we are here to provide you with real talk, providing you with real, relevant, and reliable strategies for living a responsible Christian life. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about conflict resolution. Conflict happens to all of us. It happens to us within our marriages, within our workplace, within our homes, with our friends, with our children. Conflict will happen, but the outcome depends on how we decide that we're going to handle that situation. When we share spaces, habits, dreams, and oftentimes children, there are bound to be some misunderstandings. We're not going to always see eye to eye on everything because we're all individual people. And usually the conflict comes into play when we feel like we're not getting our way in a certain situation. So therefore, there is conflict. So that is what we will be discussing on today. Okay, we're going to also provide you some foundation. Obviously, we often come from the perspective of what does the word or the Bible say about it? So we're going to provide you with some scriptures on how to resolve conflict God's way. And the word coming from Matthew, the book of Matthew, fifth chapter, ninth verse, it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. And I can hear my elders saying there's a special place in heaven for them, baby. So there, there's a special place for people who in the midst of conflict can be called peacemakers because it's not always easy. Um, A lot of times we in our counseling try to reiterate that when the two are at the varying extremes, at the end of the spectrums, that's where they are, two, two different ends. And because you take a stance and you say, this is what I want. And the other person is saying, no, this is what I want. You're saying, this is what I believe. They're saying, no, this is what I believe. But at some point you have to accept the fact that there oftentimes is a peacemaker. And according to the scripture, blessed, blessed are they? Yes. And they shall be called the sons of God. Now let's go a little further. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter to 26 verse. And it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Uh, if you, This is the English standard version for the King James Version may say your wrath. But it provides you a foundation to say that it's, a, it's important to understand we're human and we get angry. That is a natural emotion from the beginning of time. If you go back to the biblical times, you know, uh, uh, even God became angry with the people when they um, rebelled against him. Um, you know, you just get angry. That's a natural emotion, but it's what we do with that emotion that makes the biggest difference. So he said in the scripture that we could be angry, but it's what we do with that anger. He said, but do not let the sun go down on that. Don't, don't sin, don't sin. And then say, okay, I'm just going to just wish it away. In other words, uh, he wants us to understand that we need to get it right. We need to get it right, not just wish it away if we become angry. And so then there comes a period of time when we often may say, okay, with the sun going down, I used to hear that when I was a child, meaning, you know, don't go to bed. And we hear it often, don't go to bed angry, which is is an awesome, awesome um, suggestion for anyone, uh, period, whether you're in a home, in a marriage, in a relationship, friendship, whatever. That's wonderful advice. But sometimes you have to say, to yourself, we'll get into this more deeply a little later, but am I ready? Am I in a place where I can uh, get this conflict resolved? Am am I in a place where I can change this emotion from anger to potentially peace? 
And sometimes you have to be honest with yourself and say, okay, I'm not going to bed angry, but I do recognize that right now I'm not in the best place to have a conversation with someone or communicate with someone in a positive way to bring forth resolution. So do not let the sun go down. You often, often, often need to, as we often always been told, we need to repent daily anyway. So this becomes a part of our process. I know sometimes you like Tinder likes to share things on that particular scripture. Is there anything different you want to share? No, just that, you know, sometimes you need that cooling off period of time that that present moment even if it's evening is not always an appropriate time in order for you to be able to solve that particular situation so sometimes you do need to take that 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 time to pray about it and seek God about it before you try to solve it Okay, and another is the book of Psalm, uh, verse, excuse me, chapter 37, verse 5. It said, commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him, and he will help you. So in conflict, we have to have a trust factor when we want to bring about resolution. Um, because if you don't trust, it's often difficult to get something resolved because if you really don't trust that it's going to happen the way it's supposedly said it's going to happen, then you're going to oftentimes have that wall up. You're, going, you're never going to just be open and honest about it. So even spiritually speaking, it said commit everything you do to the Lord. So even in your process, you got to trust that if I do what's right, then I'm going to trust that God will help me. If I you know, we're going to give you some tools in a few moments, some skills to use. So if I do these things, I'm going to trust that God will help me. And this is so important because I have spoken with people and sometimes they get into a to a, a, a space where they feel like with the other person, they already are thinking about the other person's reaction or the other person is not really being honest or they're not going to be open or they're not going to be receptive. So then they put that wall up and then. They don't practice those skills to really resolve that conflict. But this is so key. It said, commit everything we do to the Lord. And what? It said, trust him. Trust God that he's going to help you. So if you want to resolve the conflict, but you're so concerned with the reaction from the other person, just trust God that he will do what's needed behind the scenes. He will soften hearts. He will move hearts. Um, he will change minds. Trust God through the process and he will help you. So as we go through the process, we do want to look at five different ways that people tend to handle themselves when they are faced with trying to handle a conflict. And the first way is called withdrawal. And that can be physically or psychological. When you just basically withdraw yourself from the situation. You don't want to have any dialogue about the situation. You don't want to talk about it. You just remove yourself from that conflict situation. And for some people, that's their way of dealing with the conflict, is just not talk about it, just not be involved at all. And I stated briefly earlier that sometimes you do need that little bit of time to get yourself together, but totally withdrawing from the situation does not make the situation go away. That situation is still there. You're just not participating. The second way of dealing with conflict is winning. Your ultimate goal is to win. No matter what the situation is, you don't care if other people get hurt, you're not considering other people's feelings, you just want to be the winner. It doesn't matter what happens as long as you are the winner. And in this type of conflict solving, it, it lets us know that you're not concerned about the relationship or other people involved. You're concerned about self. 
And we want to always be mindful that we need to do what's best for everyone. It's not always just about me. I will not always have to be the winner. The third way is yielding. That is the person that just gives in. They don't speak their piece. They just say, whatever you want to do is fine. But oftentimes we know that it's not fine with them, but they don't want to make waves. So they just give in. And this too is not healthy for our relationship because the other person don't really know your true feelings because you're just giving in to whatever they want. Number four is compromise. You give a little and you get a little. It's always some bargaining going on. So you're not always winning, but you're not always losing in that situation. You have that, I will give you this if you will give me that. And sometimes that's not always solving the situation. So we want to try to get to number five, which is to resolve. Spending time through communication to get the situation solved. And sometimes in a situation, what is best for the relationship? You may not win, but you recognize it's not about me winning. It is what is best. What's best for me? It could be in my job situation. It could be in my home. What is best overall? How can we solve this that everyone feels okay, everyone feels comfortable, and it can't always be about who's winning and who's losing. Did you want to add anything to that, Stanley? No, it was well said. So those are typically the way people tend to deal with conflict, and I hope you recognize which of those types of dealing with compromise is all about self and what's about building a stronger relationship. And oftentimes when there's a conflict and you work together, it makes the relationship stronger. Okay, then we're going to talk about in resolving conflict, just as in simple relationships, uh, there has to be some kind of communication. So we talk, we're going to talk a little bit about communication and how it uh, plays a role in resolving conflict. And she kind of said earlier, like she said, is, uh, as humans, conflict is going to happen. It's inevitable. We're going to have conflict with people, um, whether it's like she said, personal at home, or if it's mm -hmm. on the job, we're going to have conflict. But in order to get that resolved, we got to open up the lines of communication. And with that, we kind of talk about those scriptures, even though it said, you know, um, you, you don't let that sun go down on your wrath. And I said, sometimes you just want to hey, you have to take a step back. But ultimately, the resolution is important, trying to get it resolved, which means you're going to have to come back at some point in time and say, and, you know, let, let, let's deal with this. Let's talk about this if you want it resolved. Um, it's such a key component to resolving conflict. Well, communication is a key component in any civilized society in order to progress. And the same thing applies in our relationships. Um, yes, we do. We have our various ways. She talked about withdrawing and the different ways one can deal with conflict. And ultimately, communication is important as and it serves as a foundation before you can even move forward. You got to be willing to open up those lines of communication. Um, and it talks about how they can really reveal what's really beneath the surface. I know in talking with people, sometimes I, I hear them say, well, I, 
I, I don't know what she wants or I don't know what he wants. And it's because the communication has broken down somewhere where you can't really get it resolved. And I've heard heard people say, you know, I, I, I just want to fix it. I just want to fix it. But I will say to them is you can't fix what you don't know is broken. So communication is so important to let that person know what is broken. And sometimes it's, it's easier for some than others. Some people are very talkative and they communicate so easily and and openly. And then there are those who are more reserved people. They're quiet people. And then they tend to say, OK, because I am the one who would make, you know, want to make peace or keep the peace, um, it, it's more challenging for them. And let's take into account how we grew up. And a lot, a lot of that has really shaped who we are as adults. Mm -hmm. And if there are any younger people listening, these are some tools that we're going to provide in a few moments that can help you regardless of your age. But as adults, a lot of us have had experiences to help shape how we communicate. And I want you to take these tools that we're going to provide and say, Communication, even though it's not natural for me just to open up and tell someone what bothers me or uh, uh, how I would like to see things uh, done differently, uh, it's important because if not, then you can, as she said, withdraw and you don't really ever get that conflict um, resolved. It just may go dormant for a period of time, but at some point in time, it's likely to resurface. So we say communication, as challenging as it may be for some, is so important to just say at some point, I realize if this is really, really bothering me, I need to talk about this. I need to have a real conversation. And for those who say mm, that's easier said than done, you don't know the person that I'm going to talk to. You don't know how they respond. We've got some tips for you as well coming up. But communication serves as a foundation for getting that conflict resolved, because if they don't know, and then I've heard people say, well, they know. Sometimes we assume that people know mm -hmm. what we're what we're thinking or what we're feeling. But you have an opportunity at some point in time. We're going to say we're going to talk about how how you just have the better moment to share. But um, to be able to say this is something that we need to talk about. So, yeah, re in resolving the conflict, communication serves as a foundation, as a key of getting it started in terms of where do you go from there? So when you are planning to deal with a conflict, um, we do think that there is some preparation that needs to take place first. So I love this scripture that says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eyes on you. Psalms 32 and 8. So God is there with us to help us get through whatever that situation might be. But there are some steps that we should take first. So I wrote down some questions that we should answer before we step into the presence of whoever we're having that conflict with. So the first question is, who is involved in the conflict? You, a lot of times we bring people into the mix that are not really involved in the conflict. Sometimes we want to have that person there that we know they got our back. Well, it only needs to be the people that are involved in the conflict and or someone that can help you solve the conflict. Sometimes a mediator is used, like couples come see us and we serve as a mediator to help them in solving their conflict. So you want to be careful with who you bring into the mix. I remember when I was a school counselor, it might be a situation between two girls, but they want to bring in 10, 10 girls on each side, you know, so that their friends can be there. 
and their friends a lot of times add to the conflict versus helping to resolve the conflict. <coughs> Excuse me. Second, what is the goal? You need to be clear before you walk into that situation with what it is you want to solve. What is the goal of us meeting together? What is the goal of us talking about this conflict? Because when you don't go in and have a clear end in mind, usually that conversation will go sideways. And you will start and the other person will start bringing up things that happened years ago. But you want to have a goal in mind of what you need to accomplish what the conflict actually is and what is it that we need to try to resolve. Three, why do we want to do this? Why are we meeting? Why are we taking action? So a lot of times we need to think about what would happen if we didn't take action. As a result of this conflict, if we don't solve it, what could happen? Four, where will it take place? You need to make sure that when you're dealing with a conflict, that it's not for public viewing. This is not Maury or one of those type TV shows where everybody is in your business. It needs to be between you, the person, and the Lord. Because other people will embellish. They will make things bigger than what they are. So you want to be careful with where you meet. Where is an appropriate location that we can meet in order to solve our conflict. And when, when would we like to do this? Because some conflicts are time sensitive. And if you don't handle it, then it causes more conflicts and more confusions. You know, so it's, it's important that you set a timeline, that you set a goal that by this day, we need to have a conversation. Because remember, if we do not, then this is what could happen as a result of us not taking the time and to share with each other how this is really affecting us, how it's affecting our relationship, and how it is affecting those around us. Because oftentimes a conflict is not only centered around one or two people. A lot of times it will spread to others because it has not been resolved. And the last thing that you should question, you should think about before you get into the conflict is how do you want it to be done? There should be some guidelines. You can't come in, you know, with your voice raised or the other person yelling, screaming, cussing. So sometimes you need to have some guidelines that if this happens, then we just need to shut it down because we're not being productive. Because remember, we want to come to a resolution that everybody can deal with, that everybody will feel comfortable with. So it's important that there's some, some ground, some guidelines, or I, I like to call them ground rules set. You know, this can happen, but this cannot happen in order for us to be productive 
in solving our situation. So hopefully those six questions you can think about before you get into the conversation or trying to resolve the conflict. Okay, and uh, we talked about communication a few moments ago, but before you can really get to the place where you can communicate, this is like a challenge. It's called your personal plan for solving conflicts, and I'm going to go through these, and we're going to go through all these P's together, but it's a, per it's a personal plan, and that's important to me because in talking with some, a lot of times people, though it could be reality, they're pointing that finger and they're saying they did this and they're the reason and this is why. And But before you can get to the point where you can sit down and say, let's get it resolved, I, there are some things I want to uh, uh, share with you that you need to do on a personal level before you even get to that point to, to get the conflict resolved. And we're going to start with pledging a commitment. And you're going. What is, what is that all about? It's about pledging your commitment to the relationship. Uh, or, 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 your, or in this case, it could be your spouse or it can be your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You pledge that commitment that there's something there that binds you and you say, OK, I know there's something there. So I'm going to be committed to this, not that. I'm going to just go in and say what I have to say and leave, because, as she said before, and we'll talk about even more is sometimes there's some give and take. And so if you're not committed to that, remember, we all get anger. We're all human. We all have emotions. Sometimes our emotions will overtake us and we forget about the simple fact why we're here. Like she said, those questions you asked, why am I here? So pledge your commitment to whomever, even if it's on your job. If you're committed to your job, you're com it could be your money. You're committed to making some <laughs> good money on that job and you could have made that commitment then you're going to need to get this issue resolved so that you can keep making that money or you can keep getting along with those uh, co-workers or colleagues. Thank you for watching Counselor's Connection Real Talk. Tune in next time for part two of today's episode. A mystery. A mystery.